on a line below. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to get started. Shalom Juan Beloved. Yahweh by Shing Hao Shai Baraka Thumb by Shem or Kakadash. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. <clears throat> Shalom. Baraka Thay Yahweh. Baraka Thay Yahweh Shai. Baraka Thay Yahweh. Baraka thang Yahweh Shai. Ka Halayim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem or Ka Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, the Lord knows my heart. Quote, unquote. The Lord knows my heart. <clears throat> so there's a reason that I put that title up there. And there's a hint of sarcasm in that statement. If somebody can please post Jeremiah 17 and 9. <clears throat> Jeremiah 17 and 9. <clears throat> so there's, a, um, there's some subtle sarcasm. In the title, and I'm going to go into why. It's a very dangerous trap to fall into when we've been built up with a certain level of confidence because that can become a stumbling block. We get too comfortable, too settled. Right here. Shalom, beloved. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak Atah, by Hashem Kwakadash, Jeremiah 17 and 9, right here. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? So we become, in the military, we use a term called a self-licking ice cream cone a self-licking ice cream cone. I know I'm great because I'm me. And who can do, do it like I can? So really that's a, a battle between the flesh. And the longer we build up that confidence, it becomes a callousness to our spiritual growth, a stumbling block. It's like cholesterol that clogs up the arteries. I'm great, and I know I'm great. You see, so what happens is we get too comfortable. We're not open up to looking at things from a different viewpoint. We get narrow focus, or big word, a myopic view. We're looking through a telescope, and we can't see or be circumspect which means to look about the circumference or look about around us, 360 degrees. So this flesh becomes a prison that looks good. It's painted with all these decorative colors. It smells good. Our favorite music is playing. And no one can penetrate the boundaries of that fleshly mindset. The Lord knows my heart, so I'm not open to being cleaned up or born again. So these are snares or traps that can lead us to destruction. 
Brother uh, Bon Malak. Matthew 15 and 20. <clears throat> These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. <clears throat> There's more to that to help paint the picture of context. So it's corruption that defile us. <clears throat> What goes in comes out. Garbage in, garbage out. I'm the king. So I'm getting ready to go send that man to war so he can die on the front line. Then I'm going to take his wife. I've been watching her bathe outside of my quarters. I'm the king, so the buck stops with me. I'm going to put that man on the front line so he can die. And then I'm going to appease my flesh. I earned it on the king. That's an example. So what happens is corruption seeps in. Self-exaltation builds up our pride or our sense of self-worth. You see, it's no different. I just, I got on the man. Now I'm getting to swing the pendulum to the woman. What does a woman do before she commit adultery? Go and get around miserable single women. Girl, you know you deserve more than that. Girl, you bigger than that. Girl, he holding you back. So what happens is <clears throat> all of this corruption begins to seep in and we big ourselves up. We forget we're still in this flesh. So we're, we're, we're feeding off of that desire to be bigger than what we are, <clears throat> greatness. Instead of being humble and being born again like a child, to subdue that inner adversary, the inner beast within. So that mind gets corrupt by the fleshly desires. So we become a self-licking ice cream cone. I'm bigger and better than this. So I think I deserve this. So there's a sense of entitlement that seeps in. I'm the king, so I deserve X, Y, and Z, my wife and your wife, because I think I'm better than you are, or you don't deserve her, I do. So we start to justify our fleshly wickedness. I deserve a better woman, so I'm going to take your wife. You know, you don't deserve her. I do. So Satan occupies a real estate, a territory of corruption, greed, covetousness, self-exaltation. So we begin to exalt ourselves above what the Most High has prescribed. That's what's meant by a fool have said in his heart, there is no God. So we replace what's written with our own inscription based on our self-exaltation. Yep, Brother Hebrews 4 and 12, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobate. So what does this mean? The Holy Spirit, that's Yahweh Shai being within us. So without the Holy Spirit, we start sliding down a slippery slope. Our foot slides in due time. So without the Holy Spirit, we become a corrupt container, a corrupt, corrupt vessel, a cistern that cannot hold water. You see, so we start leaking. We're leaking the water reservoir that sustains our life. So ultimately we die because we cannot hold the waters of life. Is it not written? He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
So once we start to become a self-licking ice cream cone, then we become our own most high, if you will. We begin to justify our own beliefs. Let's gather together on blackness, even if that brother is not exhibiting the fruits of the spirit. I like him, so I want him in my circle. Although he is not exhibiting the fruits of the spirit. He's not diligent. He's not teaching the full doctrine. He doesn't have a fervor for this truth. But I like the guy. He makes me laugh. He makes me smile. You see? So we, we, be start, we start to justify our self-internal secular perspectives. That's not based on the spiritual guidance or instruction. <clears throat> Let's go here. I was in the spirit when I made that com comment the other day. The Holy Spirit led me into the scripture. I said most Israelites got to get their teeth knocked out before they believe. I believe spitting out blood and teeth. <clears throat> That's in the scriptures. Watch this. Proverbs 25 and 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. So we slide in due time, looking like handyman on ice skating, um, ice skating wheels. We start to slip and slide because we're not building on a sure foundation, which is the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. Let me invite this brother in because I like his smile. So there's something wrong internally there. Is he exhibiting the fruits of the spirit? If he's not, then we ought to avoid him, mark him and avoid him. Not let him into the inner circle because we like his smile. We grew up together. I know his aunt and his uncle. We used to go out fishing together. So there's a lot of boys in the hood, secular views and, and viewpoints and perspectives that is polluting the faith and the doctrine. Let me see. Um, yeah, handyman on ice skates. We slide in due time if we're not built on a shore foundation. We're walking in the flesh. Though how you think Pharaoh fell? Why you think Babylon is falling? Everything is what I think and what I feel. I believe and I think and I feel. <coughs> Look at Dr. Martin Luther the King. He was set up by the international bankers. I believe that little black boys and little white girls should hold hands together. Well, he went on his feelings and his personal sentimental beliefs. And what he was, he didn't even write his own speeches. Everything was given to him. He was a puppet of the international bankers. So he was set up. How many scriptures did Dr. Martin Luther the King read? Zero. He probably read John 3.16, though. I don't know. Let's go here. Brother Beyond Yasharala. Deuteronomy 32 and 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. So if we're not walking in the spirit, we are a target for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Boys in the hood, good old boys. Good old boy network runs America off white supremacy. They play golf together. So they're promoting one another based on affiliations, you see, social groups, polarization, if you will, is a big word. They're polarizing together based on income brackets. You got the $20 million club and you got the $20 billion club. And then you got the $1 trillion club. So they polarize based on materialistic or secular knowledge, not wisdom. That's why they're falling right now. And the laborers are going to rise up against these devils, sipping on them um, frosties and 
hot chocolate with marshmallows while the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And they're continuing to base themselves in self-exaltation. See, go back to Jeremiah 17 and 9. I make a billion dollars. And calling and that's what the devil does <clears throat> all right well is the volume back is the volume back all right let's keep going <clears throat> let's go back to the scriptures is the volume back all right let's go proverbs 25 and 19 confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You see, I make 20 million a year, therefore I'm more knowledgeable. No, that was given to you on stolen land and resources, riches, riches gotten by deceit, false doctrine, illegal wars, subjugation of the poor and manipulating the poor, indentured servitude, all the corporations were built on slave plantations. So how does you making 20 million a year make you better than I am? You're a robber and a thief. So we become a self-licking ice cream cone. Let's go to Sirach 1 and 26. Justifying ourselves based on robbery. Rich is gotten by deceit. You're beneath me because you're black. I'm white. White means pure, wholesome, holy, without flaw, without spot or blemish. You're black. So that makes you corrupt, sinister, wicked. Well, that was, that was my demon calling. That's, that's what messed up the lesson. And I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> so I sent her a note and I told her I'm live streaming. Sirach 1 and 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. See? So without doing the will of our Heavenly Father, we're walking in the flesh. We're operating from a carnal mindset. I like this brother. Why? I don't know. What have you done for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh lately? I don't know. I just know that I like him. Well, the Lord is going to kill you and him for doing nothing. What have you done for the tabernacle of David lately? Lately. Look at IUIC. They're very top heavy. What do, what do I mean top heavy? They got a lot of teachers 20 plus years, but they're telling you to call on your slave master, Jebus, Jebus Cross. So how does that make them over us? Please explain that to me, okay? Just call on Christ or Jesus, your slave master. You see? So confidence, let's go back to it. We got to take our time. Proverbs 25 and 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Handyman that just got punched in the mouth. Most Jake's got to be jacked up before they believe. That's a fact. I'm speaking from experience. Okay, I I'm getting ready to put a little bit of my personal business out there only for edification. All right, when I was in uh, dating in high school, I had two girlfriends that slept with my brother, two of them. But come to find out, one became a carpet muncher. One of the girlfriends became a carpet muncher. So the Lord used my wicked drug-dealing brother to remove her away from me. Now the other woman wound up having like six baby daddies, and one of the baby daddies walked in on her while she was getting just hammered by another man. 
So the Lord used my wicked, demonic, two-third black-ass brother to remove these wicked women. I was dating both of them. The Lord used my brother. To, my, my, oh, the Lord jacked him up, by the way. He done been shot five times. No, four. He's been shot four times, living out of his car. He got shot recently about six weeks ago by an AK-47. So the Lord been knocking his teeth out. He still thinks we're just black and we should be calling on Allah and worshiping a rock, a stone. So the Lord is going to continue to jack you up, brother. I'm just telling you. And if you love your family members more than this truth, the Lord is going to kill you too. That's a lot of jakes. They're still in their flesh. We boys, dog. The Lord is going to take out you secular, uh, worldly view jakes. Okay? It's got to come. We stay at the bottom because of weak men. We're anchored and grounded at the bottom. So the Lord been jacking him up. He done been shot four times. What happened to your volume? The volume is back. Let's go back to this. Sirach 1 and 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. So our first love is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. That's it. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. See? So a true man of the Lord is a baby in the mindset. I'm not trying to say without confidence, which is with faith, but what I'm saying is the most high is our guide, our instruction. To be humbled as a child means we are solely in tune with his will. When you look at a bunch of elementary school kids, at least when I was growing up, they're sitting all on the floor. You can hear a mouse peeing on cotton. They're all attentive unto the instruction. So it's a, a subjective mindset to be open unto the Most High's will. So this takes being humble or brought low. So the Lord is only operating with those that have been reset in the mind or born again to be in full subjection unto him submissive unto our husband. We can't be a submissive wife if we're fighting with Yahweh Shai's authority and will at every turn. Why do I need to teach? Why do I need to go out to the highways? Why can't we just join together on blackness? Well, we look like each other, so let's just bring them into the circle because I like his teeth. It's absolutely ridiculous. Sirach 1 and 28. Distress not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor, and come not unto him with a double heart. So a double heart means double-minded. It's not talking about we got two hearts pumping left and right, alternating the algorithmic rhythm. You see? So it's talking about double-minded or two-faced. On one hand, I love Yahweh Shimmy Shai. But I'm complaining about doing his will. I'm tired, boss. I'm ready to lay down. But what have we done for the tabernacle of David lately? I've been sick five years come next month. Sick. Jacked up. A strangling feeling and choking sensation. Dry voice, dry throat. You see? But that fervor or the love of Yahweh Hashem Yahabashai and lowering or humbling down allows the Holy Spirit to operate in this vessel. So he strengthens us through our faith, which is an ex exhibition of power, exhibiting power by humbling down, where the Holy Spirit can operate in full reigns. For the Gabar, my gosh, James 1 and 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we can't walk in the flesh and the spirit at the same time. What have we done to earn our keep to walk into the kingdom or to enter into the kingdom? 
Are we just in reliant on the fact that we know we're Israelites? The fact, <laughs> if we know the truth, then we do the truth and we teach it. That's why the Bible says this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So we are exhibiting the traits and the characteristics of our teacher, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> he was diligent. He suffered in the flesh. He patiently endured to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. He fulfilled the law, which is not only returning, but also becoming a sacrifice. So now our bodies must be exhausted by diligently laboring. Not, not just doing what we want to do when we want to do it. But then we're still in the world faking that we're in the truth. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 4. <clears throat> so there's a lot of fake it till I make it. Let me hide out here where I look like I'm in the truth and fake it till I make it. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. <clears throat> Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. So if we got strength to work a 40-hour work week, how much of that time is a portion out to serve the Lord. If we're putting in overtime at the job and being gainfully employed, we got promoted. We got a new position. We got accolades on the wall. Employee of the month. Employee of the year. What have we done to show our faith and integrity for the house of David? for this doctrine, for the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Yep, or the Bayan Yasharala. Luke 2 and 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is when he went, Missing in Jerusalem for three days. Let's keep going. Luke 2 and 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? So this is our occupation. To be gainfully employed. So Yahweh Shai is the blueprint. To show us the past, present, and future. We died in the mortal flesh, thinking as mortal man, as Adam. We sinned during our Solomon phase, which is now. But we're given the opportunity to repent, to be converted, born again, washed by the word, where the inward man begins to get converted. So this is a conversion over into the angel of the Lord. Gods, I have said, ye are gods. So the angels which kept not their first estate, the Israelites, okay, which is also Yahweh Shai, by the way. He fell as Adam and sinned as King Solomon. Does that mean he's not the angel of the Lord? If you say that, you're going to lose. And you're going to be so embarrassed, you're going to try to bury your head in your backside. And that sounds very painful. So the angels which not kept their first estate, Yahweh Shai showed us the trajectory of where we came from, dying as Adam, living and walking in the flesh, and then sinning as Yahweh Shai, but being exalted and strengthened and made perfect through his sacrifice, his blood, So if we're walking in our feelings, we're going to get embarrassed rather than subduing what we think we know through our flesh and being born again as a newborn baby. 
open to instruction, to a broader way of thinking. The Holy Spirit flows within a non-constricted mindset, totally in subjection to our husband, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And Brother Basic Wisdom, Job 38 and 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. So King David instructed King Solomon how to be a man by doing the will of the Heavenly Father. That's what he told him to do. Keep the charge, my son, and do the will of Yahweh. Keep his commandments. <coughs> we cannot slough off and think we're going to get a pass or the sense of entitlement because we feel like we know we're Israelites. Or the GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate, 2 Timothy 4 and 5. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Well, this takes labor. Will she not know that I was about my father's business? So if your Shai can be occupied and gainfully employed at 12 years old, what excuse do we have as a grown-ass man? Well, I'm entitled because I'm an Israelite. No, the Lord is going to kill you because you think you're right. All right? I can't stand a weak man. Let me say that again. I cannot stand a weak man. That you got to put a damn a telephone pole up his backside to motivate him. The Lord is going to kill you weak men. He's going to kill you. Let's read that again. 2 Timothy 4 and 5. But watch thou in all things. Ensure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So this takes tedious efforts. Suffering and sickness. Under the weather. Body aches. Migraines. Family acting up. Spouse acting up. Kids rebelling. Nothing stops the will of the Heavenly Father. So this is what makes us perfect through our faith. Because our faith is unshakable when we're grounded in the doctrine, the commandments. Brother Gabar Ayash, Isaiah 62 and 7. And give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So we're not resting until the tabernacle of David is rebuilt, fully, fully established and erect. The pillars of wisdom, his teachers laboring diligently on the fundamental principles and doctrine of Yahweh Shai. That's when we're at rest and in the kingdom. That is when we're at rest and peace. For the basic wisdom, Ephesians 4 and 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So this talk takes a renovation. The furniture got to be reestablished re or thrown out. The old furniture and then remodeling, renovation, but then the inward man. This is a restored consciousness. This is the higher consciousness, okay? Ordering our house aright, our internal being. So it takes refurnishing, renovation, a new fresh coat of paint, rather than I've had that same coat for 30 years, so I'm not changing it, or you're going to die as an old grimy Crusty ass nigga. I'm just telling you. So that prideful old man coming up in this world, well, I'm proud to be an American, but well, the Lord is going to kill you as an Afro-American mindset. That sense of entitlement rather than subduing to his will. I'm immune and numb to that carnal boys in the hood spirit. 
I can't stand it because it keeps us grounded at the bottom. What are the fruits of the labors of that individual? Is he a productive tree helping to edify us and feed the flock, or is he taking up space and stealing oxygen? Let's go here. Sirach 43 and 31. <clears throat> who have seen him that he might tell us, and who can magnify him as he is? There are yet hid greater things than these be, for we have seen but a few of his works. Now when we're reading this, there's a hidden reward of what the Israelite men, the sons of Jacob, are going to become if we remain diligent. So the Lord is waving a carrot in front of us. You just stay diligent, stay on fire. There's a big reward of wonderful works, power, and magnificence that you're going to become. See, for the Lord hath made all things, and to the godly hath he given wisdom. So the wisdom is a ticket. The wisdom is a token or a key to enter into the kingdom. But we must know the secret code, which is the name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and their doctrine that follow them. So we must understand the author and finisher of our faith. We can't please them based on our own carnal mindset or a cycle of view, because it just keeps us as just a bunch of Negroes hanging out on a block and yelling out precepts, but we're not wearing the doctrine that we're yelling out at everybody. Inviting niggas into the circle, by the way, that are not producing, they're not productive. Any job you go on, they're going to look at your productivity over the last week, the last 30 days, and the last year. What have this individual done for this organization? And if the answer is nothing, then your black ass got to go. Okay? You got to go. All right? But I babysit your kids. Well, I'm going to find a new babysitter. There's the door. And not be seduced by that, that worldly mindset. There's the door, Negro. There's the door. Brother GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate. John 3 and 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So we're not trying to collapse our skull and go back into our mother's uterus. It's talking about breaking down that old worldly man, being black, or just being Indian, or Negro, or Hispanic, or Native American, but being a new spiritual cre creation. So this takes a process of breaking down that which was built up over the course of time, corruption, debauchery, greed, covetousness, so think about it. It's a miracle to be able to take this truth and redo and collapse years of being built up on pride, greed, lust, covetousness, idolatry. So that Solomon man must be broken down and afflicted, beaten with many stripes in order for us to reform our way of thinking and subdue our mortal mindset to greatness, immortality, and inherit the eternal kingdom. Let's keep going. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. No, I want to go straight to the point. Deuteronomy 6 and 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So if we can do an 80-hour work week, what can we do for the truth, for the ministry? And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, in thy mind. The word heart comes from the Hebrew word lab. 
and thou shalt teach them diligently. So when you look at that word diligently, shanan in the Hebrew, shanan, shanan, which means sharp, pierce. Just like the words say, rebuke them sharply that pervert the doctrine. Shanan, diligent. So that takes a fervent energy and desire and will to please our Heavenly Father. So the word becomes our sword, that piercing sword. Homelessness, brother, in need. Now, thank you. A lot they were doing that to Elder Monatazak's channel. Ain't no such thing as a, a you in Hebrew. And we're not Yisrael. What is Yisrael? That's Yiddish. Yiddish. What is that? You're homeless because of your, you, you got a corrupt mind. The Lord did that to you. And there are some elect members that the Lord pulled out of that homelessness. Okay, let's go here. <clears throat> they do that to, see, I got thrown off my, my line of thought. No, that's, this person is playing games. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6 and 7. And thou shalt diligently, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I've been homeless, okay? So don't, don't interrupt the, the lesson like that. Hell, I've been homeless. Yeah, I've never said it, but yeah, I've been homeless too. But the Lord is putting us through certain situations to try our faith and diligence and test our integrity. Are we going to believe and trust on them, or are we going to just victimize ourselves? Woe is me, spirit, and, and feel sorry for ourselves. Or are we going to trust on him that controls poverty, sickness, and riches? health and wellness. So that diligent, that fervent spirit to teach. I want to go here to, um, yeah, there's a lot that I've been, I just don't, I don't like to go into what I've been through because it sounds selfish, number one, and then it sounds like it's um, like a whining, like a baby. But sometimes for edification, I'll briefly go into what I've been through. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis 46 and 1. Yeah, a lot of us have been homeless. But a lot of these individuals, they just want to, they just want pity and they want to, what's that GoFundMe account? But they don't want to seek the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That woe is me spirit. But there's no spiritual growth or desire. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 4. Let's go to um, Genesis 4, 46 and 1. Genesis 46 and 1. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, or Yaqua, Jacob. And he said, here am I. So we know that Jacob changed his name to Israel. To Israel. His name was changed to Israel, which means Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. But he had to wrestle with the angel first. So there is no building up or there is no strengthening without going through hardship a struggle, a wrestling match, adversity, being beat down. I've been through that too. Beat down, beat, I mean beat up bad. But that, did I just lay there and feel sorry for myself and, and put up a GoFundMe account? Some of you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. But everything we go through makes us who we are today going through with adversity, being shot at. I've been shot at. You think I'm, I'm happy about that? 
being shot at? No. But everything we go through, the Most High is building us up for greatness, for something bigger and better. For the basic wisdom, Matthew 16 and 18, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and my gates. Uh, I'm excited. Brother, basic wisdom, Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You can't build on a weak foundation. See, so Peter must be strengthened. The Bible says when Peter, when thou art strengthened, Strengthen thy brethren. You think we can build on a weak man, a limp noodle, okay? Got beat down and just totally fell apart. All his teeth knocked out and gave up. That hurt, I give up. Here's my bloody towel that was white, okay? You can take this towel and I'll throw in the towel. So you can't build on a weak foundation. So the men of the Lord must be endowed with the Holy Spirit that strengthens us. So we can take the, the bruises, the whips, the affliction, the beatdowns, the chastening of the Lord. You know, Howard Shai was whipped, beat. I mean, think about it. He's the second to the most high, watching his own creation spit on him, mash spiky crowns into his head where the blood mixed with sweat and tears and salt ran down his eyes. The people that he created beat him down, cut him up and whipped him, spat on him. But we're complaining because we lost our job and, and ready to quit or we're sick. I give up. So the rock or Peter, Pedra, must be strengthened, strong, reliable, unmovable. In the doctrine, <clears throat> let's keep going. Let's go here. <clears throat> yes, Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye shall do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. So a part of the occupation is teaching and doing the will of the Heavenly Father. So it's wearing the garments of the Lord, which is his full doctrine. And it comes with suffering, which is a part of the territory, to suffer. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So they can see the Lord's people wearing what he taught, wearing the doctrine. So we can, it's, it's well known, it's seen, it's visible. The garments of praise is the understanding and execution and doing of the Lord's law, which is the doctrine or the word in its entirety. For the Hebrews 4 and 12, Philippians 2 and 7. Let's go to 6. Who being made in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. See? So this is Yahweh Shai. So this is being subject unto the elements of this world, affliction, being beat down, and serving. 
Honor or humility comes before honor. So now Yahweh Shai is honorable because he was on the earth sinless as Yahweh Shai. And he did not come here to gain clout. Really, you can't gain clout in this world. We're under the international bankers that fund child trafficking and fund illegal wars, bloodshed to build up wealth. So how can you build clout on theft and robbery and bloodshed? you got to be an absolute dumbass as an Israelite to think you got status because of your fiat currency, drug money, and blood money from the international bankers, human trafficking, child sex trafficking, illegal wars, bloodshed, and drug trafficking. And you gain a little bit of fiat currency and you think you're a big man now. You're blinded by the rudiments of this world. We're under the caveman. So what, what, what clout is there here? It's ludicrous to think you're going to get clout here. you got to bend over as an actor to, to gain some status here. What, what, who boasts on that? I got plowed by an 80-year-old Edomite cave animal. So I'm a big actor now. So what? And you're wobbling like a duck after being destroyed by an Edomite man. But yet you're a big man now. You see how dumb that is? So there is no clout here. We're under the devil. So how in the hell can you get clout? Read Job 9 and, and 24. Some of these Israelites have lost their damn mind. Philippians 2 and 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So he had to become a sacrifice first for his own sins as Yahweh Shai in order to be exalted to immortality, godhood. So we got to be beat and whipped through the stripes of suffering in this flesh, which are chains of darkness before we can be released from these prisons. Yahweh Shai shows us that. So there is no clout trying to get monetary wealth or a house. Guess what? We got to pay an international monetary fund or IMF through the Federal Reserve, which is a criminal organization. It's not a federal organization. It's controlled by the United Nations, Rome, the European Union and NATO. So we're paying a tax locally, uh, nationally, and globally to Rome, rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Our house belongs to the caveman. Our garments belong to the caveman. Our cars, our bank account is all subject to his auditing his internal revenue service, which works for the UN, by the way, underneath Rome and the IMF, these are criminal organizations. We're taxed at birth and death, but yet we got clout. No, you're an idiot if you think you got clout here. Like the Purple People Eaters, they built up a $150 million organization, and they're telling, telling us to call on Christ. And Jesus, the Lord is going to kill you. I'm not, there's no sensitivity I have to somebody not grounded in the doctrine. Zero. And I'm not going to say what I really want to say right now. But the Lord is going to really jack you fake prophets up and you fake brothers out there. And every year somebody tries to justify these damn men. Every year. But telling us to call on Jesus. I have no sensitivity or connectivity to somebody that's grounded in the flesh or this world or false doctrine. And I'm going to leave it at that. For the flame of fire, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. So 
So they've gotten some of Esau Edom, the so-called white man's fiat currency or Federal Reserve notes. So now they're decked out in purple garments looking like they're already in the kingdom. Fake gold and silver decked out wearing crowns and sitting on chairs made by Esau, riding a horse made by Esau, and was guided, guided by a Shedemite devil their last year's uh, Passover, guided on a horse. Their leader came in riding a high horse. So they're already in the kingdom and, and built up a $150 million organization on a Roman Catholic doctrine that you're going to burn in hell if you don't follow their leadership. No, you're going to be destroyed when these missiles come. That's going to be your hell here in America, built on robbery, theft, bloodshed, and lies. So your hell is going to be your own success because you trusted in this damn devil. Yup. Yeah, where's that hell? Right here. Somebody posted it. I thought it was Revelation 14. No, that's Romans 14 and 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. So the Israelites were made to be a permanent fixture, Zion, unmovable, or to Zion, a memorial. We are his Heritage, his inheritance. So we belong to Yahweh Hashem, the Shai. Even the two thirds are going to be regenerated through the one third remnant elect, because the Lord loves us at the end of the day. But on this side, He's going to show His wrath and fury to the rebels that despised instruction and despised His wise counsel. Brother Zadok, 1 Peter 4 and 7. 1 Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Fire is going to be their end. That's going to be their end. Fire. So they're not going to be preserved on this side. They got to wait to be regenerated through the nutsack of the men of the elect of the house of Israel or the Israel of God. So really the anointed, the elect ones are vessels of the Lord's eternal mercy because we get no mercy without the mercy through Yahweh Shai, his anointed. So he is the elect of the elect. So without that, without the Lord's anointed or without a remnant, then there is no Israel. We would all get bribed and seduced and bow down and get plowed by a telephone pole by an 80-year-old Edomite man because we want to move up in rank in this system or gain clout. You're an idiot if you think you can get clout under a sodomizing system of cave beasts, robbers, murderers and rapists and, and child molesters. What good is boasting on that? I would be embarrassed to have a $20 million home on a system built on robbery and colonization. I would be trying to hide photos of my house because it's, it's dirty money, it's blood money. Rich has gotten by, it's cankered. It's dirty money or the Gabar Ayash Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So I, you can't see, or the purple people organization, your destruction is going to be and the foundation that you trusted on, Rome, Esau, Edom. So your $150 million enterprise is going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone, nuclear missiles. There was a vision that I had where um, their leaders were very depressed. 
and all the lights were, on, were out in their building. This was about three or four years ago, and they were turning over the keys to the men of Great Millstone. They had their head down, and then they walked down a long, dark hallway. So really, that darkness is the day of the Lord. It took me years to figure this vision out. Because really, I thought I was bugged out when I had it. Usually when I have these visions, I don't understand them. So the leadership of uh, the, the eye you can't see turned over the keys to Great Millstone. They all had their head down. The building that we were in, while I was looking, they couldn't see me. It was all total darkness in that facility. And they were all looking sad and gloomy. So that's a great and terrible day of the Lord. Let's see if your $150 million enterprise stand up to these nuclear missiles, you purple people eaters that told us to just keep calling on Jesus that enslaved us and built their corporate uh, businesses and their international banks on our plantation slavery. The Lord is going to destroy you. You've been warned. You can't say you didn't know. Let's see if your Jesus saves you in the great and terrible day of the Lord. And if you feel any pity for these niggas, then you're part of the problem. Somebody post that. He that justifieth the wicked. Why you think the Lord said, remove yourself from these wicked uh, Korah, Datham, and Abiram and number 16. But I thought the God see all, all Israelites the same. No, he does not. The Lord does not see all Israel the same. It's stratified. It's, stratif it's stratified. There's levels or tiers within the house of Israel. Where is it at? He that justifies the wicked. So if you keep trying to justify these damn men and they're calling on Jesus, the Lord is going to kill you with them. That boys in the hood spirit. We all Israelite. Can't we just get along? It's right here for the Gabar Ayash, Proverbs 17 and 15. He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination unto the Lord. They mean well. They're still Israelites at the end of the day where they're going to die on this side and wait to be reborn through the nutsack of the Lord's elect men. That's what's going to go down. We're all just Israelites. Why can't we just get along? Well, why did the Most High tell Moses to separate yourself from these wicked Israelites in Numbers chapter 16? So the Lord has a tiered system that's stratified in the, uh, the, the house of Israel or in this mountain. For the basic wisdom, Proverbs 3 and 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Beautiful. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. So really the Lord is even showing love to these other Israelite groups through the teaching of the true prophets. Stop defiling my name with Jesus. Repent. Don't take the digital device through this digitization, which is tribulation. We cannot separate the tribulation that's coming without discussing the digitization. Even when they hit a certain switch, it activates a signal if we've taken that ionized juice. You see? Or if we've taken that concoction, that elixir, certain signals is going to bug you out and make you drop dead on the spot. So the Lord, through his men, was saying, don't do it. Don't trust this devil. Don't take this man's elixir, his concoction. Certain signals are going to activate, and your eyes are going to roll in the back of your head, and you're going to drop dead. Well, let's see if you call on Jesus in that day, if it saves you. Did it save us out of plantation slavery? Did it? Did it? So now the earth is being sent in a frenzy, an uprising, because the true 
men of the Lord and his remnant elect is calling on Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akakadash, and rebuking the evil works of the devil, of the wicked, and the rebellious house of Israel that have aligned themselves with the wicked, or the tabernacles of Edom, the synagogue of Satan. Brother Nathan Welch, Job 17 and 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that have clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. So we get clean by warning the Lord's flock, getting the blood off our hands. That's in Ezekiel 3. Warn them from me when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. But if thou warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way, Thou shalt live. His blood will I not require at thine hands. So this is what we're doing, diligently laboring, not trying to ride a free ticket of entitlement because we think we're Israelites and we're already in like Flynn and do nothing and ride it out. Let's go here. I need to get ready to close this out. I had a list of my own scriptures but man, I didn't even make it to most of what I had written down. Well, that's the spirit. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 19 and 6. And this was under King Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, during his time. 2 Chronicles 19 and 6. And said to the judges, take heed. What ye do, for ye judge not for men, but for the Lord who is with you in judgment. So this boys in the hood, let's just gather together. Hey dog, hey dog, what's up dog? What's up dog? You know what, yo homie, the Lord is gonna get rid of you. You're not born again. Are they exemplifying the fruits of the spirit? Or are we resting judgment? Why not just post the whole scripture instead of just put Acts 2 and 17? Well, we got to look it up. Why not just post the whole scripture? My goodness gracious. Acts 2 and 17. Yeah, he's pouring out his whole spirit. Yeah, I mean, that's why visions are being seen, even through the other nations. Okay? But the elect is being reborn or baptized by this doctrine, submerged in it. And please, if you're not going to put the whole scripture on there, please hold your peace. <clears throat> Let's go back to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 19 and 6. And say it to the judges, take heed what ye do. For ye judge not for men, but for the Lord, who is with you in judgment. So Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is monitoring us. He's monitoring what we're doing. Are we wrestling judgment for clout or for homie's sake? This is for my homie. This is for my homie. Yeah, yeah. See you in. We get there. And hey, the Lord is not dealing with that. This is for my homies. He's dealing with his will and not wrestling judgment. This we boys, dog. That's boys in the hoods. That's a worldly spirit. Hey, Shalom, Malak. And how about Shimmy Habashai Barakatha? I shimmer Kakadash. Shalom. See? 2 Chronicles 19 and 7. Wherefore? Now let the fear of the Lord. Oh, I'm excited. So what he told us should be guiding us. When we're deviating from that, we don't fear him. I know this man. We grew up together. So I'm going to bring him in the circle, regardless of what the Bible say. Or he's got a certain level of status or position. I want to emulate this man or walk in the shadow. So I'm just going to show him favor. 
because I want to walk in his shoes. He looked like he got it going on. You see, that's called a nigger. I grew up in the streets of New Jersey, in North. I used to see these drug dealers decked out a gold nugget on every ring, North New Jersey, where they would just shoot Jake just for looking at you the wrong way. They got these fancy cars. They had all the women. I said, I want to be like that, man. Look like they got 20 women per man. They got it going on. That must be the right way. So I was being confused, not knowing that Esau Edom paid a lot of these single mothers to kick the mans out so they can get government assistance and Section 8 housing. So they were raising up high-value simps in this world that were paid off to destroy the neighborhood and shoot up the damn people in the area and establish drug lord fiefdoms or territories, turf wars. So I was only seeing the result of a delinquent people that's destroyed, not knowing they were raised by Keisha and Shirley's and Big Mamas and Laquisha's. I didn't know that at the time. I just was like, they got it going on. I want to be one of them. But the Lord pulled me out of that environment of North New Jersey. So niggas were my role models, but I didn't know no better. Second Chronicles 19 and 7, wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. So chasing clout is going to get you killed. And I'm not going to shed one single tear when a stray bullet knocks you in the nugget or the forehead. There's no such thing as a stray bullet. An angel guided that bullet. An angel guided that bullet to take you out, Ray Ray and Pookie. The Lord is going to eliminate Ray Rays and Pookies. And a lot of them have gained rank, status, and power in this system. Under a 501c3 government contract and handouts for the GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate, they're decked out in gold, purple, and silver, telling us to call on Jesus and sing, we are the world, we are the people. And they're telling us, if we rebel against them, well, we're going to just burn in hell. The Lord is going to do a lot of killing, and we need it. We need a healing through a lot of killing. I like that. We need a healing through a lot of killing. The wicked two turns got to be cleaned up and erased or eradicated from off the face of the earth. Let's go back to this. Beloved brother, GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate. Shalom, Malak. Yahabashim, Yahabashim, Rakathah. James 2 and 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord, Yahabashim, Hamashiach, the Lord of glory, with respect of person? For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and godly, oh, oh, oh. Oh, see, I was being misled by this. James 2 and 2, I'm excited. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Hey, look, the purple people eaters had a man that they called the pocket, where he had just accumulated a lot of wealth. So they was exalting this man. Gave him rank and a position and status because he was donating a lot of money to their $150 million filthy enterprise. So they built up their structure on men with goodly apparel or golden nugget rings, all under blood money and a 501c3 government contract. The Lord is against you, 501c3 contract, uh, fake pot pastors and prophets. Because you're, you're wrestling judgment and you're judging for reward. But they believe as long as you call on Jesus Christ, you're going to get some mercy and deliverance from that. The Lord is going to do a lot of killing, a lot of killing. 
All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahabashai. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahabashai. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahabashai. By Shem Rakat Kadash. 2 Chronicles 19 and 8. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem and charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. So King David's heart was perfect in fear and faith of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. He didn't develop that we boy stuff, but it was how to please our Heavenly Father. So the true men of the Lord are walking by faith, not by clout or sight, or they would be, be bewildered or derailed by all the glitter and gold and silver by the purple people eaters first and foremost, and by these celebrities, high-ranking Edomites, international bankers, the global elite that love to plow toddlers in the backside, they would be amazed by that. You see? Really enchanted. And charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully, and with a perfect heart. That perfect heart is tied to our faith and fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Fearing the judgment when we deviate from his will. That's why the Bible says, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. So there is no judgment because the buck stops with me. I'm the king. So I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. I'm the king. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Matthew 23 and 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be a base. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So this is why a child shall enter into the kingdom. That, that reformed mindset of being humble and made lowly and meek. A child listens with full subjection. They got the little bright eyes, if you will. That little spark in their eye. Just fully attentive to what you're saying and looking up to you and listening with full subjection. They're not saying, well, what about this opinion and what about that doctrine and disbelief and what about Big Ray Ray and Big Pookie and he's got all the holes and all that. They're not doing all that. Because they trust in your message. So our rebirth is a reformation of our mindset and way of thinking. To fully trust on him and believe on him. Hey, Shalom, Malak, Yahabah, Shimi, Havashah, Barakatha. Brother Karatazat Abad, Proverbs 1 and 26. Let's go to 24. Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. So the Lord is showing mercy and love, really. Because these warnings and these corrections are going out round the clock. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. By his teachers, his men. So he has not cast off Israel. How we know it? Because the true doctrine and the name is being taught in the full capacity. It's not being diluted or polluted or watered down by false doctrine. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Every year, his name don't matter and, and Jesus Christ or who's the king? Christ. They even be marching like little toy soldiers. Who's the king? Christ. So that's why a lot of, hey, this place has got to be cleaned out, okay? It's got to be cleaned out, the nation of Israel. And that's going to start with a genocide 
Even Ezekiel was like, Lord, are you going to kill all the house of Israel or all of Jerusalem? So Ezekiel saw the slaughter. He's back. He saw the massive slaughter of wicked Israelites. When we read Ezekiel 9, he was like, are you going to kill them all, Lord? You know, my goodness. See, he's going to bathe the streets of Babylon with the who's the king? Christ, you niggas. And also the clout chasing fake jakes or to fake it till I make it, a sense of entitlement, a free pass or a free check, free chicken, if you will. I'm going to just show up and be a black-ass Jake and think I'm going to waltz my way or hopscotch into the kingdom with no labors. No, the Lord has got to eliminate you too because while we're under attack, you got in your comfort zone. Here it is, we're being jacked up and poisoned every day and lied to, bridges under demolition. Controlled demolition bridges. Buildings being destroyed. Our mindset is under attack by false propaganda. The food is being rationed and dried up. A famine is ensuing. But yet you're comfortable though. Proverbs 1 and 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. <laughs> Excuse me. Told you I've been sick for damn near five years. I'm not feeling sorry for myself and making excuses, but praying for strength through your how about shimmy how to shy. Proverbs 1 and 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind and distress and anguish cometh upon you. So these whirlwind are the chariots. So the Lord is going to finish this place off that's already going to be on fire. But it's not enough to soothe or appease his anger. He's going to further exacerbate or make worse the fire by these chariots, these so-called UFOs. It's going to turn up the heat, if you will. Just like the heat was turned up when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thrown or cast into the fiery furnace. But the Lord turned that heat on those wicked Babylonians that tried to destroy his elect. But the Son of Man showed up and delivered his faithful. So I'm, every year, just it, it's really aggravating. These men are hardening in their hearts, which is really the spirit of like, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai doing that. Because prophecy must be fulfilled. He said, it shall come to pass in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. That's America. So that two parts must, those lots must be occupied. Those seats got to be filled. No seat is going to be left unoccupied. Reserved seating is for the wicked two-third house of rebels and the elect. That said measure that must be fulfilled. So that two-thirds is specific to America. Yep, brother. Man, this king is on fire. Brother GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate. Proverbs 22 and 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide of himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So the elect are moving with fear and haste to come into the ark and be covered. The name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is a strong tower. So the elect is being pied piped by the harmony of this new song. The pied pipers are the prophets that are just playing that flute. And the elect is just dancing, which means moving in haste to the sound of this doctrine and coming into the ark but the doors are getting ready to be shut, okay? The doors are about to be shut down. <laughs> so the time is getting ready to expire for this window of opportunity of salvation. So this window is shrinking. You're going to have a bugged out, two turd ass Jake trying to squeeze his head in through a small, narrow hole like this when the windows are closing. And the Lord... <laughs> 
and the Lord is going to give a command, bring on the missiles. They had time to stop calling on Jesus. They had time to repent and turn to the full doctrine. They had time to put away the old man of this world, tracing money, holes, and clothes all the nigga knows. They had time, but they refused wise counsel and instruction and chased clout at the fiat currency and riches that are polluted with blood, okay, off the backs of our ancestors, working through blood, sweat, and tears. It got so bad where they were singing, swing low, sweet chariots, coming forth to carry us home. We're catching hell in this hot-ass sun and being beat with whips because we're not moving fast enough. Although we're only getting about five cups of water throughout a damn eight-hour work time frame. But yet you got jakes that are proud on blood money, off the blood, sweat, and tears of our forefathers and ancestors of the so-called Negroes and Native Americans and Latinos. Blood is on your hands, you wicked jakes. But you have basted yourselves in this clout chasing and dirty money. So they're dancing to the tune of the devil. You see, make it rain on, my, on us. So they're like strippers. They're stripper, uh, stripper boys for Esau Edom. Stripper boys being decked up in makeup and eyeliner and lipstick for this devil. Lady boys dancing to the tune of this wicked man. But they're happy with it. Why? Because the price is right. So they're okay with bowing down to this beast system because the price is right. So these are what you would call male prostitutes whoring after other gods. Sleazy E is going to, going to plow and, and pound these wicked jakes. But they're okay with that because of their clout and their lust for greed and power and status in a world that's falling and is going to be destroyed by fire. Brother Gambar Ayash. Let's read this one first. Basic wisdom. Matthew 9 and 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So we need workers. Every hand on deck. But there's this weird sense of entitlement. I know for certain that my bloodline go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord knows my heart. I mean well, although I'm not doing shit. If you ain't doing shit, you ain't shit. Let me say that again. If you ain't doing shit, you ain't shit. Okay? And if you don't like the harsh language, there's the door. Go back to dancing to I'm in love with a stripper and decked out with this man's filth and debauchery on his stage, the world stage built on blood. So you go back and dance to his tune because you're not moving on the melody of this new song, this doctrine. So he got these lady boy fake prophets decked out and precious stones and glitter, gold and silver, and purple, illustriousness. So they have their consolation. They have their comfort by being just totally ravished by this beast. And they're going to get sodomized by his chip too. They're going to take this man's little miniature rod, his sea hip, or might be. Hell, they're already enjoying his ravishing. So they're going to take it a step further with their tongue just dropped out down to their chest. Okay, waiting to get sprinkled by this wicked man and his gifts and showered with this man's rewards and gifts. A gift destroyed the heart. So they're tongue out for this man. They're like dogs that don't bark, but they're lusting after covetousness and whoring after their God, sleazy eat, 
That's their God. They're not laboring in the Lord's field. Okay? That's right. If you ain't doing shit, you ain't shit. Let's go here. Brother uh, Gambar Ayash, Luke 6 and 25. Here it is. We're being poisoned every day, but we got to pull the nigga's arm to get him to work. Are you kidding me? Are we? Are you kidding? We got to drag this joker by his damn arm and put him in a Nelson truck chokehold. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're under attack daily. Damn bridge done got hit by a manufactured event. But we got folks that are comfortable, though. What is that at? Luke 6? No, let's keep going. I want to go here. I'm going to get ready to close out. <clears throat> let's go to Matthew 8 and 24. So the, the, the signs of faith are noticeably visible. You can't hide faith because that faith is that glimmer of light in your eyes. You ever had a student or a young man or a young lady? You can tell that they want to learn and that they want to be there. There's this spark in their eyes. You see, that's tied to their belief, their faith, and what you're telling them. So that young child with bright eyes will be looking up to you in full subjection. That's the faith we got to have to our husband, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, let's go here to uh, Matthew 18. Who is the greatest in the kingdom? Not some wicked bugged out Jake with decked out in glitter, fake gold, and then chipped off draw silver, silver flakes. Talking about he's the king. No, you're not. You're just a grimy pimp and a peddler underneath this man's system of debauchery and sodomy. Let's go to Matthew 18 and 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Yahweh Shai, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So who is great? And Yahweh Shai called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. So those that are subduing everything we've learned to be built up as a so-called man in this wicked system of debauchery under a big birther and that pimp, our pimp, Sleazy E, if we forsake that nigga and come back to the fountain of living waters, then we're subduing everything we got built up in to become what we call a grown-ass man in a worldly uh, view or mindset. See? So this is being renovated or cleaned out from the inside. All that garbage and filth, all that old furniture of what we learned in the world got to be thrown out, okay? A little stinker just dropped a load on that five times over the last three weeks. It's got to go. So we're cleaning house, if you will, which starts on the inside, the inward man. Matthew 18 and 3, and said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this is why everything's got to be reset. It's How many grew up saying, I'm a grown-ass man? But when we come into the truth, that old man is broken down in order to be rebuilt in the spirit. So the spiritual foundation gets rebuilt up, polished and furbished with a, a house cleaning, new furniture pieces, if you will, on um, Bavarian oak wood out of Germany. You see, black woods, oak, pure solid wood, stronger quality, which is this doctrine. Matthew 18 and 4, look up black woods or black forest wood in Germany. You're going to pay some money for that. So this is a refurnishing, if you will, a rearrangement. Instead of being stuck on pride, I'm a grown-ass man. That's why a lot of them are bugged out, looking to make it here in this system. Matthew 18 and 4. 
Whosoever therefore, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So an entire reformation. So our counseling, if you will, is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. We're seeking counseling to come out of that status as a harlot. You see, as being drunk or an alcoholic off the wine on Babylon. We're seeking counseling to get cleaned up as a crackhead and dancing to the tune of this pimp, Sleazy E. So this takes trusting in our counselor, our wise master teacher, that have taught teachers, the apostles and elders, that are sincere. So we got to admit that we're alcoholics or crackheads first, which is destroying that pride. My name is Amawana Bai, and I'm an alcoholic. And I've been a harlot for Sleazy E, my pimp, for the last 20 years. Well, it's time to put off that old man and come on into this counseling and therapy. This man made us straight filthy, okay? Thots and thugs and street niggas and pimps. The old world, the old man. But I'm a grown-ass man, though. You see, bugs out. Let's get ready to close out here. Yeah, this is beautiful. Thank you. The Wadi Yahweh Shimmy Havashai. Brother Gabar Ayash. Psalms 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is the new furnishing, a high quality wood. You see, the, the rearrangement, the, re the, the renovation, the spirit and the divine restructuring of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh a heavenly higher level authority over what we've learned in the world. Psalms 51 and 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't kill me, in other words, because to be walking in the flesh or walking in the worldly wisdom of this world is a death sentence. Just going right off the cliff. I'm a grown-ass man. But everything you learned was by the devil. Okay? Underneath Catholicism, false Christianity, or this street mindset, build up clout, drug money, which is building a nest egg, and then you can make it. All lies. What happens when the dollar collapses? That dollar is nothing but firewood. It helps to kindle the fire. Or oh, it's kindler. It's kindle material. Like little straw pieces to help kindle firewood. Here it is. The devil had you turn in all your gold and silver. You just turn in your gold and silver to me. And I'm going to issue you some fiat notes and fiat currencies. Okay? Fiat certificates. The biggest heist of all time. So everything in this world is going to pass away. But the spirit that's building us up and strengthening in our faith and our walk is leading to an eternal kingdom of authority. So the true treasure is understanding, first of all, where our power comes from. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and his divine Doctrinal knowledge that's being infused into our mindset, our psyche. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Beautiful. So his presence, that connectivity to him is through his Holy Spirit. That's why we're getting visions, interpretations of dreams, prophecy, being able to tell things before they happen being able to, to gain insight, who's probably elect and who's playing games, who's sincere, who's not. The Holy Spirit helps to reveal all things. Let's go ahead and end it there. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Brother GMS must endure. 
on the line below. You know, how about Shimmy Abishai? Or Rock Psalms 139 and 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Meditating, that Psalms chapter 1. Meditating day in and day out. How do we please the Heavenly Father? How do we get better? How do we grow? How do we prosper in the knowledge and faith and wisdom? Bettering ourselves. Killing that old pride. I'm a grown-ass man. And growing through the Spirit. And increasing our faith and productivity. No man can survive on a corporate job with low or no productivity. So why should we marginalize or treat the truth with less value or attentiveness and energy? Are we devoting more energy to being a successful American citizen or are we trying to get built up to obtain a throne or a place in the kingdom to come? So our works is showing which side that we're on and that sincerity. So this is an exhibition of that light within. That's how we know a fruit by its trees. Because it's giving off what's on the inside, being connected to the, the, liver, the living waters, which is the full understanding. That's why a tree is giving off fruit constantly. So the Lord knows the reins of our heart. Are we deeply invested? Are we sincere? Or are we just trying to do enough just to get by? Fake it till we make it. Just skirt the fine line because we know we're Israelites. So we're going to bang everything on knowing that we must be Israelites. So there's no way the Lord is going to kill me. You know, let me get some free chicken, a free pass. No. The Lord understands the deep inner workings of what's going on on the inside. Are we deeply devoted and passionate and on fire to please him? Or are we just trying to do enough just to barely get by? So re remove from me a presumptuous mindset. I must be the man because I know I'm an Israelite. I must be it because I have a certain level of understanding. There's no way he's going to kill me is the worst mindset because we get too comfortable and become a self-licking ice cream cone. I'm great and I know I'm great and glorious because I know a lot of precepts. So the Lord knows the innermost thoughts and what's going on from within. Brother Hebrews 4 and 12 Psalms 26 and 1, a psalm of David. Judge me, O Lord, I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. See, so trusting it in him is that firm foundation of wisdom. So this is that divine inspiration that comes within us because our faith so his wisdom is is what we're leaning on knowing that the missiles are coming knowing that this is a a ticking clock that this truth is time sensitive knowing that we got to move with a sense of urgency how many are rushing to get the work them weaving in the lanes in and out of lanes cutting people off trying to check in. I'm here, boss. I'm here, nigga. All right? You saw me walk in. I'm here. But then when it comes to serving your house by Shemmy Abishai, dragging feet, late, you know, barely show up, and think the Lord ought to be grateful that we showed up the time that we did. You ought to be thankful that I'm here, Lord. You see, this is why the Lord is going to get ready to do a lot of killing. A lot of killing. But for boss, we show up there, make sure he see us. When we get in there, we slow and hesitate going through the damn door. Just slow up so he can see us and make eye contact. You know, I'm here, boss. This is why the Lord's got to get rid of a lot of niggas. 
It's got to. It's got to occur. It's got to. There is no other way. So there's a large genocidal commencement that must take place. You see, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. It just makes me angry when I stop and think about it. You slow up to make sure this nigga see you in the doorway. I'm here, boss. I'm here. Unbelievable. My goodness gracious, I just got to stop and breathe sometimes. Just in, you know, in through the nose, out through the mouth. <coughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. Beautiful. So this is trying to rush to be accepted by his mercy and, mercy and grace, which having that constant fear that we're going to be destroyed or deleted if we don't please him helps to keep us honest. You see, not being presumptuous. I know I'm the man of the man of the man. No way he's going to kill me. Well, you probably that nigga that got to go. You see? That false sense of security. One thing that kept me working as hard as I did was that constant fear of being fired. I don't want to drop below productivity because I know I can be dismissed. All of us are replaceable. None of us can, we got to get out of that. I can't be replaced. Yes, you can, nigga. You can go too. Okay? That sense of just that high and mighty mindset. How you think the devil is falling? Esau, that have said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Well, that's why he's falling now. All his infrastructure is falling. Nobody trusts the devil anymore, by the way. Okay? Now they're trying to use Jake's to promote medicine and science. The sea hip is going to be promoted by celebrity Jake's that so-called made it. So that is a haughty mindset that leads to death. I made it. No, you didn't. Aren't we still paying taxes to the devil? Well, when did you make it to other than the International Monetary Fund, you dumbass? This is why a lot of Jake's got to be deleted. I'm the man, but you're paying 30000 a year to the devil in taxes. So what do you own? What do you own other than your pride? A lot of killing is getting ready to take place on this earth. For the flame of fire, Luke 17 and 7. The New Living Translation. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of sheep, does his master say, come in and eat with me? No. He says, prepare. He says, prepare my meal. Put on your apron and serve me while I eat. Then you can eat. And does the master thank the servant for doing what he was told to do? And look, this is a little small token of what we should be doing. Really, we're worthy of death. We don't even know what we did in our former life. How many other brothers' wives did we take? Who did we murder? You know, how many of our people did we sell out because we had a position in our former life? So this is just a small thank you of what we're doing, the least of what we can do. But we think the Lord owes us something. You ought to be thankful I'm doing this lesson right now. This is why the Lord's got, he's getting ready to do a lot of humbling, a lot of humbling. Here it is, we're putting tick marks and X's on the calendar. Lord, you ought to be thankful I done did this much work here. I got 30,000 calendars stacked up that I done X'd out. So a great humbling is coming, and that's going to be by fire, which is starting with you niggas that know you're Israelites, but you're comfortable here while we're under a major onslaught. Of course not. See, I didn't even read that further. Of course not. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say we are unworthy servants who have simply done 
our duty. Beautiful. Beautiful. So to be haughty or lifted up in pride, that's following after the caveman. Hate to say it, but he thinks his shit don't stink. The pride of this animal's heart have deceived him. You know, imagine being a dog with a damn gold chain around your neck. And you're a dog with a leash and collar. But the Lord gave this beast this temporary authority and dominion. The Lord raised up these animals underneath the animal kingdom. So to pride yourself in what you were given by the Lord just to help prove mercy, I mean uh, destruction to you and mercy to his elect, you're terribly mistaken. Now this Noah you all Harari is saying, we got the technology now where the, the fear of the God of the Bible is obsolete because now we can manipulate the weather with our heart system. We don't need to pray to him on what we've been told, the God of the Bible, on what he told his people to do anymore. Now through artificial intelligence, we can make rain. We can produce genetically modified organic fruit and vegetables. So many Jakes are following after their daddy, Sleazy E. <coughs> a dog with a damn gold chain around his neck. It's absolute mockery. Absolutely ridiculous. It is through his will and through his creation and his divine plan we are where we are today. <clears throat> Let's get ready to end this thing. Wow, yup. The beloved brother GMS Spiritual Art. Psalms 2 and 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Beautiful. So there is no salvation or mercy without the Most High allowing it. We don't even grieve the next day if the Most High does not ordain it. We don't even get through the day unless Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai ordains it or sanctifies it. We don't even know who we are or our nationality if the Most High didn't ordain it. We, don't, we barely even know our name if the Most High didn't put us in our right state of mind. The Most High gave us a right state of mind. The Most High gave us our consciousness. The Most High gave us our health and wellness. So to boast in something that we're not the source or originator of is straight, that's biting from another man's hand. I mean, it's unbelievable to bite and slap the hand that fed us and then boast that it's ours, that we're the originator, the creator. We're the author of something that was handed to us. We're going to brag about it. It's, it, it makes no sense. Brother GMS must endure Psalms 10 and 6. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. So this is that fool that has said in his heart, there is no God. Because he believed that he can artificially engineer salvation and a kingdom built on science and technology, robotics manipulating the elements through an advanced heart system, creating a man-made agricultural system built on synthetics and laboratory-tested elements. You see, and I'm going to control the population on signals intelligence and measures instruments and intelligence, or mass in. And I'm going to use signals through 5 and 6G. So I'm going to move the creation of the Most High through my artificial intelligence or AI. I am the Most High through my science, which means to know or Gnostic or Gnosis. <coughs> Unbelievable. So what it does is dismiss the Most High, and his laws, statutes, and commandments, and creates a, a substitute. 
Anything you eat that's a substitute, best believe it's going to kill you. You know, a substitute sugar. Well, what the hell is this then? If it's not real sugar, what is it? Unbelievable. You're eating poison. This is not real fruit. It's a substitute fruit. Are you out of your damn mind? So what am I eating then? You can't be serious. So this man creates a a, a salvational substitute, artificial, built or based on false promises, false premises, no firm foundation, artificial sugars. Well, you're trying to kill me then. Where's the real thing? Go ahead and trust me. I tested it in a laboratory on rats and mice. This nigga is out of his mind. But you Jakes love him and trust him though. You love him. Or the GMS Spiritual Art 144. Ezekiel 28 and 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not a God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of the Most High. See? So because he's ruling over people's multitudes, nations, and tongues, through his contorted mindset, he did that out of his own wits. Wits go back to wisdom. So he believes in his thwarted mindset that his own comp competence and proficiency has gotten him the kingdom. I was looking at a statement that, um, look up Amy Chin. There was a Ku Klux Klan member came on their comment board. He said, um, if you had the capability and the strength and the mastery of how to rule, then you people would be in rulership right now. So the pride of this man's installment on the throne has, cre has caused him to think he did it out of his own wits, his own intellectual capacity. So the pride of his mindset has deceived him into thinking he's great, greatness, unbelievable. But he's sitting on a slippery slope, and this man is getting ready to fall hard. The Lord raised you up, as he did Pharaoh, to bitch slap you down to the ground to let you know that you slapped the hand that put you on that throne. The Lord put you there. So in order for you to be brought back to your senses, he's getting ready to take you down with a strong right hand. That's Yahweh Shai, by the way. I'm speaking in dark sayings. The Lord raised up Pharaoh and brought him down to do a power or a arm flex, a demonstration of his might to raise up one throne and take down another. Brother uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, Psalms 14 and 1, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do of good. Beautiful. The Lord looked down from heaven and upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. So everything we get here in this sacred world is only a small second of joy or fulfillment. When you look at the riches and the promises to come. So the most in a split second to be self-exalted is minuscule. When you compare that relative to one, how old the world is, about 12 and a half thousand years old, but most importantly, to the kingdom to come. This is only a split second of our small glimmer or breath of life here compared or relative to the kingdom of promise to come. So to boast on a split second of fame 
It's absolute madness only to get knocked out in a couple of seconds. It, it makes no sense. If it does not fit, it's not legit. It makes no sense. And not understanding that the Lord put you on the throne and raised you up. <laughs> See, it's right here. Again, my spiritual art 10, uh, Sirach 10 and 13. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So this kingdom is going to fall by strange calamities. Okay, earthquakes in diverse places. An electromagnetic pulse weapon to be put in the dark. You're blinded anyway, not knowing where the light of the true wisdom comes from. So the Lord is going to blacken your eye more and knock you out with this kingdom. A $150 million false doctrinal enterprise calling on Jesus Christ and being decked out in purple, gold, and silver. So you already have a black eye. So the Lord is just going to put you in total darkness at the destruction of this kingdom, which is only a fractional second compared to the longevity of the kingdom to come and the existence of the earth, about 13,000 years old. So he's going to overthrow the kingdom of Edom, just like he took down Assyria, Babylon, the Medes, the Persians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the revised Roman Empire, America, the European Union, this new Rome, newly constructed or reincarnated from the old world, is going to come down crashing. So Rock 10 and 14, the Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. So this is not only applying to the prince of the power of this world, but also uh, Judites, okay? Israel and Judah, those that are glorying in this, in this side, turning tricks or performing tricks to, to move up or clout chasers. Here it is, you got to get sodomized by damn uh, a 30-foot electrical pole in order to really move up here and get some status, <coughs> which is really embarrassing. I would be ashamed to have a high-level position here underneath Pharaoh, the devil, okay, that engages in child sex trafficking, woman over the man, all right, subsidizing single woman parenthood to help create several generations of child delinquency so that you can stay in power and continue to turn over more simps and more simps and more simps raised by Lakeisha, Laquina, and Big Bertha and Big Mama. So little Ray Rays are being rolled over into generational delinquency underneath this system, which is all by design. Every kingdom of the ancient rulers of the heathen Push feminism. You see? Shanana, um, Di Diana, uh, Ashtoreth, Ishtar, you name it. Um, what's another one? Athena. I don't want to keep calling these names. Okay, I might get struck by lightning. I'm just going over the debauchery here. So this feminism is nothing new. All the ancient kingdoms push that. Because you have to emasculate the masculine principle of the alpha male and continue to cultivate beta male simps. That way you can stay or secure your throne by creating delinquency, okay? And bug outs and, and, and broke backs. And that way you can continue to turn over another decade or century of rulership under debauchery. You got them, our women are shaking their ass and dropping their breasts all over YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook. I thought they were supposed to be raising the children and teaching the kids at home. No, they're shaking their ass on TikTok and Facebook and YouTube. 
So who's helping to de develop, cultivate, and, and build up productive young men and women? And where's the fathers at? Okay? So under institutional racism and the emasculation of the male principle, then this system is set up in place to continue to perpetuate itself on destruction and death and delinquency and strengthening the privatized prison industrial industry or industrial system. This place is wicked as hell. Brother GMS Virgin Island Straight Gate, Luke 16 and 15, and he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Beautiful. So building ourselves up on, on the worldly treasures and lusts or clout, chasing clout, as the younger people say, chasing clout. In this world, it's really vanity because we know that it's, it's going to pass away and vanish like, like dust or a smoke stream coming from a damn incense that's burning out. So the light of this man's candle is starting to fizzle or burn out. It's being put out by an overwhelming scourge or floods of this doctrine. So here it is. You're trying to hide under damn uh, incense that's burnt out and try to use this man's smoke screen to cover or hide your sins. But you should not be able to hide yourself from the all God of terror, the king of terror, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. The Bible says that the light or the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Only a damn, what's that man that played for the uh, Carolina Panthers trying to hide behind a damn skinny tree? A straight dumbass and the FBI pursuing you, you simp. It is, you convicted of murder. And let me try to hide behind this little twig here. You dumbass. Well, that's you bugged out Jake's trying to hide behind a damn small incense that's burning out with no damn smoke screen. What was his name? I think it was uh, played for the Carolina Panthers, convicted of murder around 99, 2000. That's how bugged out a lot of these Jake's are. Let me hide myself behind this little small narrow twig or bamboo stick. One little bamboo stick. I'm going to just hide my, myself right up or right behind it here. And the Lord is not going to find or see it. What was his name? Played wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. That's the mindset of most of our Jakes here. Bugged out. Brother GMS Spiritual Art. Job 20 and 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Beautiful. Though, though his excellency mount up to the heaven, and his head reach unto the clouds, he shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. So this man is only going to be an afterthought, all right? Just a, a, a back thought, like a bad nightmare that we don't want to even remember anymore. I want to look up this simp played for the Carolina Panthers. What was his name? Convicted of murder. I'm just got to get it because it's at the tip of my, my brain. Yeah, uh, Karuf. Ray Karuf, 1997 to 1999. Ray Karuf. Simple. <clears throat> Brother Nathan Welch, Isaiah 25 and 5. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat 
with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. So really that great shadow of a cloud, the Lord is going to appear on the earth as a large mountain. Okay? A great fathership. But the destruction is going to start with nuclear fires, followed by the laser and chariot fire, the many ships. And then the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night on a great and terrible day of the Lord, which is going to be darkness and not light. So a combination of the massive debris and soot and destruction and fires and blackness of smoke mixed with the the chariots of fire and the, the, the Lord coming with fire, flames of fire. It's going to be just total mixture of different types of destructive elements being mixed together. Total destruction and fire and the, and the elements becoming liquefied like hot lava from a volcano. Massive. So the Lord is going to judge the heathen with strange works. And a part of that is the elect being caught up into the skies, ascending up into a cloud, the chariot of the Lord, the star out of Jacob. But Yahweh Shai is coming in or commandeering, commanding. <coughs> so I've talked enough, tried to get the point across, but really our faith cannot be hidden. Because that faith is going to come out on display, on us diligently showing our fear and faith of the Lord. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is what Yahweh Shai was talking about. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Because faith causes us to move with urgency and productivity. And not just doing enough just to get by or fake it till I make it, but being moved by that fervent or fiery ignition, okay, and the oil of that, of that fear, and, and being led by fear and faith, <coughs> and the oil that fills this engine to keep us moving or burning on all cylinders or on fire, being fervent in the faith. Yep, there it is. Matthew 5 and 15. Go to 14. Beautiful. So this, this passage is to the elect that cannot be hidden because the elect are on fire. How easy is it to hide a fire in a land of gross darkness? Speaking with wisdom. You're not going to be successful hiding a campfire in the gross darkness of a forest or wilderness at night. So the elect are burning bright by being on fire with wisdom. So the doctrine makes sense, if you will. That's noticeable. It's very noticeable. Matthew 5 and 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Beautiful. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So it's made visible and it attracts more to be ignited by that light. You know, you, have, you take one candle and light the other candlesticks. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glory your Father which is in heaven. So there is no glory in the Father without praising and exalting his name. I mean, how many starts reading a book without telling us who the author? Damn it, who wrote it? You done got halfway through the book. Here it is, you done captured my interest. I don't even know the author. Now I'm just agitated and aggravated. Who wrote the book? So all praises to you, how about Shem, how about Instead of here it is, you didn't got halfway through the book. And we don't even know the author. So there is no salvation or glory 
without the name or the author being glorified. You know, this doctrine was written, signed, sealed, and approved by the author and finisher of our faith, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And if you're in a campfire at night, if you got that only one fire going, many other campers are going to make it over to your campsite with something to light and spread that light from your fire. So we can't have a, a damn smoldering fire nigga that don't want to do anything. His fire is smoldering. Nothing but little streams coming out. And there's no, no candle lit. What good are you? Okay, other than to lay a dead pig on, a dead pig's carcass on a smoldering campfire. Absolutely worthless. But a light that's burning bright, other campers or other hopeful elect members are going to be drawn to that light with something in their hand. Hey, yo, man, you got a light? Well, let me get some of that light. We over there freezing to death with a, damn, with a raw lamb over there or, you know, a raw... A piece of beef or goat. You see? So everybody's going to be drawn to that fire. <clears throat> Instead of smoldering nigga with a damn little stream of fumes burning. But nothing lit. Bugs out. Bugs out. Talking about he and the truth. How you in the truth and you're not on fire? Okay, that makes no sense. If it does not fit, it's not legit. You in the truth, but you're not on fire. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? You can't make this stuff up, man. Unbelievable. If you ain't doing shit, then you ain't shit. And I know it hurts. I know. But you know, simps and, and weak men help to keep us at the bottom. They're bottom feeders. Brother Hebrews 4 and 12 Acts 4 and 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you. Hold, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of of the corner. So we're building on Yahweh Shai's uh, teachings, on his works. If not, it's going to come to nothing. So that memorial, if you will, is being polished off and refurbished. The Lord's temple that's being rebuilt up or cleaned up, if you will, from the ruins. But it, it's got to be a, a memorial dedicated to someone. I mean, you ever seen a memorial with no dedication? Well, it's a beautiful stone of marble, but who is it dedicated to? So there has to be a name attached to great works or salvation. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Beautiful. Let's end it there. Oh, let's get this one. A beloved brother, GMS Virgin Island, Straight Gate. Acts 3 and 7. So Yahweh Shai's name must be exalted. And Yahweh. That's salvation. Or leading to being a king or priest in the kingdom to come. But it carries a doctrine. <coughs> Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So these prophets, these men of the Lord, got to be meek and humble. To be like that of a child. And, at a, and or, instead of being presumptuous, I'm the man. I'm entitled because I know I'm an Israelite. There's no way the Lord is going to kill me. Who, me? You know, say it ain't so. So what it does is it causes us to just to deify ourselves based on our own reasoning. And again, the military call it a self-licking ice cream cone. So really the Lord starts to bug you out, but you don't see it. You start calling on Yabba Dabba Doo, 
Like there's one bug out group. They call on Gabba Dabba Doo. You know, what, Gabba Dabba Doo, what the hell is that? So, the, so what they started to do is build themselves up or polish themselves. Next thing you know, the Lord bugged them out. So the secrets of the doctrine and the name is through those that are of a lowly spirit or brokenhearted. That have been that those that have been made themselves as a child again, listening with all subjection instead of being puffed up. Yeah, them men are calling on Gabba Dabba do now. I wish I was making this up, but that's scary. That's scary. Brother GMS, Western North Carolina, Matthew 5 and 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. All right, we'll go ahead and end it there because we read that one. So, so light travels, light travels, and is shared among those that are desiring light, <laughs> and that light can be transferred by lighting other candles or other uh, campsites. Okay, but anyway, the spirit jumped on me. First of all, I just got angry, you know, angry, you know, and then the spirit just jumped on me real heavy, you know, attacking this sense of entitlement. I know I'm an Israelite and I know the Lord is going to accept me the way I am. I can do the bare bones minimum and still be accepted. There's no way he's going to kill me. No way. So that presumptuousness or haughty spirit leads to death. Okay, that's the same mindset as our pimp, Sleazy E. Now I'm trying to draw back on his AI and science and technology. So the Lord is going to bitch slap this nigga and take him out and bring him back to reality. Because right now he's lifted up through the strata, through the stratosphere. He's literally lifted up through the stratosphere. The devil has made a nest in space called an international space station. So this devil, you got cavemen in spacesuits right now. I wish I was making this up. So now this man is exalted beyond the stars, beyond the clouds, okay? Even storing everything on the cloud. Everything we text message and voicemail, Facebook, YouTube, Tic Tac, Snapchat, whatever the hell you call it, Instagram, all of that is stored in the cloud. So this man's artificial intelligence has deceived him into thinking he is on the same level as the most high. But once you're bitch slapped, then you're going to be, that's a reality check. When you're going to be brought back to reality, to your senses, if you will. All right? Back to the earthly realm and, and cast down to the ground, out of the strata. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. I tried to make it as edifying as possible. Where is it that the, the caveman in spacesuits? Right here. Obadiah, verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So through his manipulation of the elements, through science and technology, through laboratory synthetic meat, genetically fabricated lettuce and tomatoes and, and fruits, he believed that he can sustain himself off of science or artificiality. So he thinks that he can outdo his creator. I'm going to manipulate the, 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 the creator of the clay that made me or that shaped me. I'm going to show him I'm the boss. Although you're just a clay piece, you red beast. Obadiah verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So your space force is not going to save you, you red animal. Your international galactic space station. There's going to be a great war in heaven. And all things that's going to be falling from the sky is debris. 
fallen cavemen and debris, all right, along with your unicorns, your satellites, and your fancy space station you constructed. All of that is going to fall down to the ground. You're going to be left with nothing but burning hot liquid lava. All your elements that you worked fervently or feverishly to build was all for naught, all vanity. So the Lord made you to build you up, only to cast you down to the ground, okay, when you went against your creator through your pride, so that he can show his might and power through destructive force while simultaneously elevating the poor, the meek, the humble, the poor man that cried out in the streets for mercy and salvation and deliverance. But no one wanted to listen other than his anointing. So he's going to do simultaneous marvelous works and, and marvelous acts. Okay? So he is the puppet master and the creator. All right? I'm going to go ahead and end it there. So the pride of this animal's heart, which is his mind, has deceived him by his ability to gain an intellectual understanding of the universe, but to a limited degree. You know, the solar system and outer space and satellite communications technology, 5 and 6G, radio wave technology, nuclear technology, which makes the atomic bomb look like a small firecracker. By the way, the new atomic bombs, 1,000 times, 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb. So the new technology of destructive force is 1,000 times more powerful and destructive than the atom bomb from the 1940s. But the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and he's going to raise up his men to be 100-fold more powerful than you devils. So you think you've gotten something going for you. You know, you the man, or so to speak, or the pimp of the earth. But when he brings you down, it's going to be a great and marvelous, wonderful day. All right? And you rebels of the house of Israel are going to be humbled in that day. And not just thinking you're going to get a free pass to acceptance just because you know you're Jake. No, you're going to get your ass jacked up. The Lord is not playing. We still got wicked leaders telling us to call on some goddamn Jesus. That's the devil that enslaved us. So how in the hell are we calling on a slave master? Well, that's okay, though, because I'm feeling in my spirit we're close. And all the Lord's wrath and fury and anger is going to be appeased by these spirits created for massive destructive bloodshed, fire, hell, rain, rockets, the sword, all right? UN troops, Gurkha troops, mercenaries are going to be moved by vindictive spirits that are just lusting after your blood of you wicked jakes along with, with the wicked. So everybody's going to fear the Lord when it's all said and done. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the tabernacle of David is being raised up and bullshit is coming down. Rebels, thoughts, thugs, harlots, fake it till I make it, Jakes. Okay? Free chicken, niggas. Everything is getting ready to be brought back into balance. And humility is getting ready to be reestablished on the earth. Thoughts that kick the man's ass and getting Section 8 and child support. You're about to get fucked up too when all these savages start roaming the streets looking to ravish you and pass you around like saltine crackers. You've been warned. You can't say you didn't know, but you laugh at these warnings and these messages along with you clout chasing jakes that have become multi-level mega millionaires of lies and pride decked out in purple, gold, and silver. The Lord is getting ready to reestablish humility, pride, and his fear for his name. Tabernacle of David is being raised up and built back better, 100-fold, all right? A megaton of power 
compared to the ancient world of the house of David. One man is going to chase a thousand simps and cave beasts. One man is going to be able to do that in the days of the reward and immortality, the gift of the eternal promise. So we got next, Lord willing. Kwame Yasharala. Kwame Yasharala. And the Bad Baba. Barak Atham. Shalom. More praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Hashem, or Kakadash. Kwame Yasharala. Destruction of Babylon. Abad Baba. Soon. Shalom. 